Hi, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Cynthia if you're new here and if you're coming from my The Serpent and the Wings of Night review video, welcome back. We are filming back to back today and I'm ready to jump back into it with the Ashes and the Star Cursed Cane. Like I mentioned in that video, in case you didn't come from that video, the Ashes on the Star Cursed King is the second book in the Crowns of Nyaxia series. Chris of Broadbent said there will be six books in this series with each, with every two books featuring new couples. So book one and two were Araya and Rain, book two, book two, book three and four will be another pairing and book five and six will be another pairing. And there are novellas in between each book, Six Scorched Roses, I guess you could consider book 1.5 within the Crowns of Nyaxia series is probably my favorite book in the Crowns of Nyaxia series thus far, but we will touch on that one in a different video on another day because I'm running out of steam. <laughs> Let's jump into my thoughts on the Ashes and the Star Christ King because I have quite a few of them. This book is a lot more fully loaded than The Serpent and the Wings of Night, so I will keep this short and let's get started. And as always, if I look to the side or down, because I'm looking at my notes, I have a tiny little pea brain, I forget things all the time and need my notes as a guidepost. So a quick little summary. The Kajari has ended and Araya's reality has been completely shattered. She's facing a gutting betrayal. Her and Rain do kind of restart in this book and I would say their arc in this book is a little more enemies to lovers whereas in The Serpent and the Wings of Night it's much more rivals to lovers. So if you like enemies to lovers more than rivals to lovers I think you will like this book more than The Serpent and the Wings of Night. The House of Night is surrounded by enemies and even Rain's nobles don't trust him and believe in him and with knives at their backs from every corner in the kingdom, Rain and Araya team up to not only save themselves but also to uncover the truth about Araya's past. There were a lot of questions from the first book that bleed into this book and so Araya is hellbent on revenge. She is not angry, she is hurt, she is grieving, she is going through some good character development. <laughs> and even the same I could say for Rain, you know, he's also kind of going through it. He's also reeling from the things he's had to do on The Serpent and the Wings of Night. And so we are picking up where The Serpent and the Wings of Night left off. We are in for a ride. So like I said about the plot in The Serpent and the Wings of Night, The Serpent and the Wings of Night is definitely plot driven over character driven. And The Ashes and the Star Cursed King is no different. Something I did note down about this book is that I really liked the action scenes because they were just as intense as in the first book and that was something that I found that I really enjoyed. I also really like Carissa Broadbent's writing. I don't know if I mentioned that in my The Serpent and the Wings of Night review but I really like her writing and her writing is just as strong in this book as the first one. But something that I really really liked in this book in relation to the plot was that we finally get more answers. We get more answers in terms of world building, things start to make a little bit more sense. And I also found that I really liked the pace of this book. Carissa Broadbent really plays with the tension in this book and I think she does it pretty well because I enjoyed it. But there are a lot of points where the plot is moving and then it will slow down and it just really keeps you, I don't want to say on your toes because it's not like super thrilling, but it's very interesting, it's very intriguing, you just want to know what's going to happen because there's a very deep, deep sense of mistrust between all of the characters and learning about Araya's past so fascinating and while the first book we got a lot of questions, the second book we got a lot of answers which was really really nice. And speaking of the characters, the characters are, they feel a lot more complex in this book. They're not necessarily more complex, I think it's just because we get to know so much more about them that they feel more complex and fleshed out and that was something I really really enjoyed. But Rain and Araya <laughs> have such a beautiful story. It's not perfect. It's very rocky. There are a lot of ups and downs. I do, I did like the way Carissa Broadbent finished their duology. She finished it on a very sweet note, which I, which I found that I really, really liked. And the romance in this book is a lot steamier, which I also really liked. <laughs> And something I do also really like that Chris or Broadbent does is that the characters aren't stuck to their respective books. So the novella Six Scorch Roses, we see Lilith and Vale in The Ashes and the Star Cursed Cane, which is so exciting because I love Lilith and Vale and I'm gonna make a review on them 
And I'm gonna post my review of them ASAP because I love talking about them, but I really like that within this world, the characters do interact with each other and it was just so fun. It was so fun to see Lilith and Vale in the Ashes and the Star Cursed King interacting with Araya and Rain. And Vincent in this book made me feel things. <laughs> Vincent is Araya's vampire king father figure. And in the first book, there was a lot of like mystery with Vincent. There were a lot of things that we didn't know about him. There were a lot of things that kind of left me wondering about Vincent. And so I didn't really feel like super connected to him in any sort of way. He wasn't wasn't a character that I thought about a lot, but in The Ashes and the Star Cursed King, I think the main difference with Vincent's character is that in The Serpent on the Wings of Night, he's a king. He's a king first and a father second. And in The Ashes and the Star Cursed King, he is a father first and a king second. And it made me feel things. <laughs> like I wept. Vincent's story comes to such a beautiful conclusion, especially his relationship with Araya. Their father-daughter dynamic takes on a much, much more, I don't want to say sweet note because then it just sounds like Carissa Broadbent just ended everything so perfectly, which is not necessarily the case because the ending was good. But when it comes to Vincent and Araya, they just, their relationship in the first book was definitely strained and there were things that we definitely didn't know. And then once we uncover them in the Ashes and the Star Cursed King, it just paints Vincent in a whole new light, in just, just, just a whole new light. And I definitely think of his character a lot differently now than I did in the first book. And something else that I also really liked about this book was the character growth. And it's not just Araya, like even Vincent has character growth where he goes from king to father. Like Rain gets a lot of character growth, Araya gets a lot of character growth, Vincent gets a lot of character growth. The side characters seem to have a little bit of character growth and I just, I, loved it. I loved it so much. I couldn't get enough of it. But overall, I definitely liked The Ashes and the Star Cursed King over The Serpent and the Wings of Night because I think The Serpent and the Wings of Night did a better job at setting everything up, but by the time I finished it, I had a lot more questions than I did answers. And so going into The Ashes and the Star Cursed King, I was determined, <laughs> determined to get answers. And I did, so it definitely did not disappoint. And like I mentioned, I loved the addition of Vale and Lilith to parts of The Ashes and the Star Cursed King because I absolutely loved their novella, Six Scorched Roses, which if you haven't read, you should read. <laughs> um, the ending was also incredibly satisfying. It was a little sad because by the time I got to the end, I realized that that was kind of it for Rain and Araya. They wouldn't be our, they wouldn't be the main focus in the rest of the Crowns of Nyaxia series. And that did make me a little bit sad, but it was nice to kind of wrap up their story very nicely. And even though Carissa Broadbent wrapped up their story very nicely, I didn't really like that I had to wait for like a whole ass second book to get some sort of answers. I wasn't really a fan of that. But I mean, I got answers regardless, so I think that's just me nitpicking. Something I also really didn't like was the fact that the ending of The Serpent on the Wings of Night sets up the beginning of The Ashes and the Star Cursed King, but I just didn't really like how everything had to happen. And I didn't like, without spoiling it, how some characters had to kind of step into the villain role in order to set things in motion. But mostly I really just disliked how the actions of these other characters broke Araya because I had really come to like Araya's character. And I guess you could say I cared for Araya's character, but I really didn't like how once we got into the Ashes and the Star Cursed King, how broken Araya was. But I will say, even though Araya is incredibly broken by the time we get to the Ashes and the Star Cursed King, Homegirl goes through a whole transformation. So even though I didn't really like it, <laughs> it led to a lot of great things for her character. I did jot down that this book has plenty of spice and swoon-worthy quotes, and it has a cast full of quirky and delightful side characters to support our leading pair. This duology is an absolute must read for any romanticy lover, and I really stand by that sentiment. 
because I think the Serp I think the Crowns of Nyaxia series as a whole, I mean obviously we still have four more books to go, so I can't judge the whole series as a whole yet. But just from these first two books, I definitely I definitely think that the Crowns of Nyaxia series will fit perfectly into the fantasy romance genre and like I said The Serpent on the Wings of Night was very violent and dark and even though The Ashes and the Star Cursed King was wasn't as dark and violent because we weren't in the Kajari, you know, Rain and Araya are still fighting for their kingdom. They're still fighting. They're still fighting to survive. So there definitely was still violence and gore and like I said, if that's not your thing, you probably won't like it, but if you do read The Serpent on the Wings of Night and you find that you like it, I think you will like The Ashes and the Star Cursed King a lot more because for me, the second book was definitely a lot better than the first. And so this book also gets a solid 4.5 stars out of 5 stars because like I said, there were little things here and there that I didn't really like, but overall this duology gets two thumbs up. I really enjoyed the duology. I really enjoyed Rain and Araya's story and the little novella in between and how the characters all kind of intermix because even though they're in different stories, they're all in the same world together, which I really, really liked. But yeah, all that being said, this series started off really, really strong. And I am very, very curious to see where Carissa Broadbent is going to take it within the rest of the books in the Crowns of Nyaxia series. And I cannot wait to read them. I am going to read all of them because I really enjoy Carissa Broadbent's writing. I think she has a really good knack for creating compelling characters and interesting worlds. And her political systems are very interesting as well. I generally don't <laughs> read fantasy for the political systems, but I found myself interested in, in this political system. So if you haven't read this series, I would definitely recommend you read this series. And like I said, I'm not someone who's into like vampires or anything, but I found that I really liked this series and I was really rooting for Rain and Araya and their duology ends on a very nice note and yeah. It's just a really good series and I think if you like fantasy romance and you haven't yet given this series a try, I think you absolutely should. These books are still on Kindle Unlimited, so if you have Kindle Unlimited, then go. You're all set. <laughs> Um, but if you don't, I would consider it because my Kindle Unlimited subscription basically pays for itself. And this is not sponsored. I just really like my Kindle Unlimited subscription. <laughs> That's all. That's kind of all I got. Like I mentioned earlier, I'm losing steam because I'm just getting kind of tired. So I will leave it there. Thank you as always for watching and I can't wait to see you in the next one. Bye.